Hey everyone, this is Eric Gospel of Summit Lending, and let's do our predictions for 2021 mortgage interest rates. So, as most of you know, I follow uh, Barry Habib, a uh, two time Crystal Ball Award winner for housing uh, appreciation, and does rates every day, which I follow, and he's unbelievable at it. So, um, let's go into this real quick. So, I don't want to ruin the video or anything, but uh, most Professionals are thinking interest rates are going to rise in 2021. Uh, Barry actually predicts they're going to they're going to have their ups and downs. They're going to go up and they're going to come down, but they're not in the long run. They're going to stay the same or go maybe down a little bit more. And the reason is, is there's a lot of reasons for interest rates, most of you know, but inflation, uh, technology. And one thing we want to explain in this video is the Fed fund rates at zero and a lot of our clients and whatnot do not know even when the Fed fund rates at zero rates could rise and lower and we want to kind of show a history of that and kind of show you a little background on interest rates so uh, let's go to the video and check it out the Fed will still be at zero and they're going to be at zero for a long time on the Fed funds rate but as you've seen interest rates on mortgages can rise even with the Fed at zero but our clients don't necessarily understand that. They hear the Fed's at zero and they can't necessarily understand why mortgage rates might be going up. Well, here's a long-term chart here for the past, let's say 40 years of the blue line, which is mortgage rates and the red line, which is the Fed funds rate. Now over a 40 year period, they are trending in a similar direction, of course, but our clients don't have a 40 year period to lock in a loan. How long do they have to lock in their loan? Who knows, 30, 45 day period to choose when they're gonna pick their loan. And as you can see here by this chart, there are many times when the Fed has raised rates, but at that same time, mortgage rates go down. Or there are times when the Fed lowers rates and mortgage rates go up. And this happens again and again and again. But let's take a look at when the Fed was last at zero. That was between 2009 and 2016. So just about a seven year stretch where the Fed remained at zero. But during that period of time, mortgage rates had a couple of, of four month stretches where they went up rather significantly. One was when they went from four to five and an eighth, another three and a half to four and three quarters. Now those are pretty big moves in a short period of time. I'm not suggesting that we see that exact type of a move once again here, but we can't rule out that mortgage rates can go up. And I think it's very helpful for clients to see something like this and realtors to see something like this because there will be times when mortgage rates do rise, even when the Fed's at zero and clients shouldn't be lulled to sleep or shocked when they do and question your authority as that you're out of line because rates that you're quoting have gone up while the Fed's saying that's zero. This could be very helpful for you to share with them. Now, I did mention debt. And when we have debt, a lot of people are forecasting interest rates to rise because of that. And we've seen any an effect on interest rates in the short term on these announcements of stimulus rise. But that tends to wear off and then the debt takes over because we are not printing money. People say, use the term printing money, we're not. We're issuing debt via treasuries. And initially, what that money that's used for stimulus does is create economic activity and some inflation. But after the effect of that wears off, debt takes over and you have to make the payments on that debt, which leaves less money to generate economic activity and it slows growth. Every place in history at every period of time, and the United States is certainly no exception, as debt rises, interest rates decrease. They don't increase, they decrease as debt rises. And this has happened in France, in Japan, in the UK, in Italy. It's happened all throughout the Eurozone, all throughout Asia, and certainly here in the United States. As debt increases, interest rates decline, they do not rise. Now there's an initial spurt where the debt, when you take it on, that stimulus causes economic activity. Think about a family who just went into debt to purchase a vehicle. Well, the initial purchase of that vehicle creates some economic activity because the manufacturer makes a little money, the dealership makes a little money, the salesperson makes a little money, and that economic activity generates some, some inflationary pressure potentially, but it wears off. And what remains for many years is the monthly payment on that debt, which then acts to slow the velocity of money, to slow growth and drags the economy down. And that's the same thing that's happening with governments. Now, 
we believe rates will remain low, but inflation uh, will be pressured lower by the debt, as we mentioned, and technology. The labor force will also be hopefully in a position to come back because there's a little over 10 million people that are out of the workforce. As these jobs, God willing, start coming back, it will alleviate some supply chain constraints and it will actually make things better and cheaper because there wouldn't be as much of a constraint on creating supply and that will actually help alleviate inflation and reduce prices. Additional spending on the new administration will increase the supply of treasuries to be sold. Rates will likely bump higher before resuming a downtrend and we're kind of experiencing that bump higher now. But while everybody else is out there predicting much higher rates for the rest of the year, we are seeing rates actually come down again because of the debt and because of technology reducing inflationary pressures.